What are the problems? If somebody takes an antibiotic for a sinus infection, what can go wrong in the colon? Well, we take for granted the fact that our colon has trillions of bacteria that are very healthy for trillions us. Trillions of bacteria. Trillions. So there's, uh, I think mainly of E. coli in, this, in the stool it can cause right. infections. And we know that people have diarrhea in swimming pools and this and that. Right. And we get spread of that. Well, E. coli is just one of the most famous bacteria. There are <laughs> lots of others. And there are some bad strains of E. coli, but there's also strains of very good E. coli. And that's one of the things that we get when we're first born is we establish a normal flora, a normal amount of bacteria uh, within several uh, days of being born. And this bacteria is very important in the bowel function. It helps regulate our waste elimination. And so what happens when you take an antibiotic? Does it maybe kill the good or what's it, it do? It can definitely alter the good. The bacteria help metabolize some of our carbohydrates that reach the colon. Uh, and uh, that's important for water absorption and formation of stool. So when you eliminate or wipe out or decrease the amount of good healthy bacteria, you can have symptoms of diarrhea uh, and worsening uh, cramping abdominal pain. And is there one bug bacteria that's becoming more prominent in causing problems? There is a bad bacteria uh, called Clostridium difficile and it rarely used to be seen uh, in um, outpatient settings, but now with the antibiotics that we're seeing, more and more antibiotics given either empirically or uh, to a patient, let's see if this antibiotic will help you. There's an alteration of the normal bacteria amounts in the colon or an alteration of the flora. You said Clostridium difficile. Now Clostridium, uh, that's the same bacteria that can cause locked jaw and some other problems. Right. Is this a different strain? This is a different strain. And is it present all the time in the GI tract? Uh, not really. We're seeing it more and more. It's more common in the, in the elderly people or people who are in uh, hospital environments or institutional environments. We're seeing it more and more. And when you see it in a hospital environment, it's because somebody's gotten an antibiotic, it cures off, kills off the good bacteria. Why does it occur? Well, Certainly, there's so much living space in our colon, this five foot tube, uh, and the normal bacteria occupy this space. So when there's a decrease in the amount of bacteria in our colon, this bad one can then flourish. There's not as much competition. Is it dangerous, this Clostridia difficile? It can be dangerous in that it can cause a lot of symptoms of diarrhea, dehydration, some fever and chills. There are some very fulminant uh, types of C. diff colitis, where you can get an inflammation through the entire wall of the colon, or what we call a toxic megacolon, and that at times can even lead to perforation, which is a very serious but rare complication of C. diff. Most commonly, it causes a lot of diarrhea that is persistent throughout the day and night. So if you find this, if somebody's in the hospital and they start getting diarrhea in the hospital, and you find Clostridia difficile, C. diff, Mm -hmm. uh, how do you make, how is that diagnosis made and then what are you going to do about it? Well, the stool can be analyzed for the two toxins and it's a very accurate test, a very high degree of accuracy for the test. And if they find the toxin and call us and they say the toxin is present in the stool, then we have a diagnosis and we treat it with one of two antibiotics. Rarely the stool can come back negative or if we're working up somebody for diarrhea or other GI problems and we see the pseudomembranes, we typically will collect a stool at the time of colonoscopy and that can be analyzed or we can even biopsy the colon and it can be confirmed under a microscope. What are the, how do you treat it? You treat it with uh, avoiding, withdrawing the antibiotic or treating it with another antibiotic? The first thing we try to do is we try to eliminate uh, the antibiotic that's being given. In some cases, that's not always possible because they have, may have another life-threatening infection. If withdrawing doesn't work, can you treat it? Yes, we can treat it. And our first line of therapy is usually flagyl or generic metronidazole, another antibiotic. Um, and we Is that effective? Typically uh, very effective uh, in a 10-day course. Uh, we usually see good results, especially if it's a patient who hasn't been in the hospital. Uh, on the other hand, if that doesn't work, the diarrhea persists, or they're intolerant to that because that antibiotic can cause a, a little bit of nausea and a bad taste in the mouth, 
We then forced to go to a second antibiotic called vancomycin. And vancomycin is poorly absor absorbed in the colon. So a small amount can stay in the colon. The problem is it's very expensive. And typically we'll treat somebody for again a seven to eight, 10 day course. But more and more in an attempt to prevent a relapse, we'll give a small amount every other day for three weeks or what we call pulse therapy.